Welcome back to Hollywood on Top. I'm Marta Bloom. And I'm Lisa Gastineau. And today with our special guest and now new friend, Tyler Henry. So, you know, I have another question. Yeah. Um, you said that you've had life-changing experiences, including a brush with death. Right. Um, how did those experiences affect your gift, if, if it did in any way? Well, it was really fascinating because this near-death experience actually happened when I was 18, and I'm 22 now. Uh -huh. And at that time, I knew that I was a medium. And not I, too long ago. Right, I know, uh, not yeah, too yeah. long. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I had been aware of my abilities, but I was kind of back going back and forth whether I should dedicate myself 100% to it or not, because okay. I was also interested in going to hospice nursing and, and kind of doing that as a career. Wow. So at 18 years old, one day I just developed a headache, and this headache didn't go away. And what ended up happening was about a week into this headache, mm -hmm. I went to the hospital, and I was just expecting to be told that I had a migraine, but that wasn't the case at all. I was told that I had severe brain swelling and they didn't know why. Oh and they did an, an MRI and found that I had a brain cyst at the base of my brain oh, wow. that I was born with. And it had grown and was obstructing fluid. My brain was swelling and I'm, it was risky because in people who have this, they sometimes have only hours to live. Oh my God. So I was put in emergency brain surgery. Um, within four days, I recovered fully. But, but when meanwhile, I, you were born with it. Right, it was born it's with it. It's just at the point where it just grows exactly. that big and then, yeah, and then it's, it's very hard. It's, dangerous. Exactly. And wow. I thought the timing was interesting because I'd had it my whole life with no manifestation of it. Right. But at this one point, I remember waking up and being afraid, you know, when I woke up that I wasn't going to have this ability. But I looked over at the nurse who was waking me and I felt her father come through. Oh and I remember that moment being God. so relieved when I just woken up from anesthesia and I was like, okay, I still have it. Thank God. <laughs> and it was such a relief. What did he say to you? Uh, it was interesting. I just felt him. He didn't really come oh, through with say. the message, but I could He didn't feel say you it. were going to be okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So but it was interesting. Does having your own show make it harder or easier for you to do what you do? I think it makes it a lot easier. I think it allows me to have a platform. We air in 153 countries, and so to be able to bring awareness of you know, life after death has been amazing. And I think it's allowed me to touch a lot of people's lives and build a, re a reputation, I think, in a big way. So what's the most rewarding? rewarding part like oh. what have you experienced that you found like I'm so glad I have this gift and I'm able to do this well being able to take a person who thinks that they're never going to feel a loved one ever again who has thought that their loved one is dead and that they are never going to be connected to be able to take that person and say no we are going to meet again your loved one is around you and to give that validation allows that person to know that not only is their loved one around but it changes how a person views life and death and it helps them live differently and for me that's really the most gratifying part. It, it helps people move forward in a way where they know without a doubt that their loved ones are okay and that they're always with them. And what's the most challenging? The most challenging I'd say is probably dealing with a lot of the misconceptions about mediums. Um, a lot of mediums before me have, have kind of, um, you know, had certain uh, generalities I think that people mm -hmm. look at and think and assume all mediums are like. And I kind of want to break that stigma and I want to really redefine what people think of when they think of as a medium. So. It's so <laughs> most people don't know that you're an amazing painter. Oh, thank you. And that you, you do abstract <laughs> art yeah. and that your work is colorful. Are you are you channeling your energies or is it is like is it a yeah. What exactly, sure. how would you explain your gift? Yeah, well, in that regard, you know, when I'm painting, it's really just a way of kind of relaxing and kind of rejuvenating. And so when I'm doing my work, which is so intense and, and oriented towards energy, it really allows me to get energy back and to be able to kind of... Um, Do you often feel healing. like a brain overload? Oh, yeah, all the time. In class, especially in high school, I used to sit there and get inundated with messages and feelings. And at one point, I ended up sharing them with my teacher. And mm -hmm. I had a message for her and ended up being correct. But I didn't do great in math. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get a good grade because I was like, OK, I did, let's yeah. go. <laughs> exactly. Well, funny enough, I got a D in math. And it, it actually ended up being risen to a B by the end of the semester uh. because I'd meet with my teacher after class and do readings yeah. for her and she would give me some tutoring. You would think they'd want to keep you around a little bit longer. Wait a minute, wait a I minute, know. we're going to have to repeat that one exactly. more time. Exactly. Yeah, do it over. What advice would you give people who may not have your gift but want to feel some sort of connection with their loved ones beyond the grave? Yeah, I feel like it's very important if we're looking to feel those signs, to really be present. And I know it might sound obvious, but for me and my work, it's very important that when I'm sitting across from a person that I put my own thoughts and feelings and emotions to the side mm -hmm. so that I can pick up on information that I wouldn't normally be receptive to. That's true for everyone. So also often we get used to you know, our schedules and the beeps and our buzzes of our phones and notifications and going, going, going. If we can just be present, if we can just practice really being with ourselves, that can really revolutionize what we feel, how we feel, and will allow us to pick up on those feelings and impressions from our loved ones and also notice the signs. Well said, that's amazing. Thank you.
Thank you so much for coming. I hope you can come back and stay longer so we can dig deeper into your special gift. You know it. I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you. Tyler Henry is an amazing individual with a unique purpose in life. Witness it for yourself on his hit show, Hollywood Medium, with Tyler Henry. Find it on E! or binge it. He's that good. Catch him on tour in a city near you. Get those details at TylerHenryHollywoodMedium.com. Check out his book, Between Two Worlds, and follow him on social media. I'm Marta Bloom. And I'm Lisa Gastineau. For what's hot in Hollywood, from the top of Hollywood, this is Hollywood on Top. <laughs>